Hello and welcome to this tutorial on parametric rolling, a practical guide for seafarers. This tutorial is designed to equip seafarers with a thorough understanding of parametric rolling and effective prevention techniques. This knowledge is crucial, particularly for those operating large container ships or vessels with similar hull characteristics. By the end of this tutorial, you will be equipped with practical insights to navigate this potential hazard safely. So let's get rolling and find out what this is all about. I went below to my cabin and uh, I was there about five minutes and the ship took a, a very violent, uh, went into a very violent series of rolls. And um, it was rolling so violently that it took me a while just to be able to negotiate one, one deck up to get up the ladder and get up to the bridge and, and see what had gone on. Um, when I got up to the bridge, the chief mate was visibly shaken um, because it was what I believe affected him as it did all of us uh, through, through the night was the, for a seaman, we are, we, are, we are trained and through experience we know what to do in a head seas, but to, to, to roll violently while in a head sea condition is, re, is really outside the norm and it's not something that's to be expected or, or anticipated. This tutorial will address the following topics. Parametric rolling is a dangerous phenomenon predominantly affecting large container ships and roll-on, roll-off vessels. This condition can induce severe rolling even in relatively calm seas, potentially resulting in crew injuries, substantial structural damage, and significant cargo losses. Parametric rolling differs from conventional rolling in its underlying mechanism. While traditional rolling is directly caused by waves exerting force on a ship's side, Parametric rolling is induced by periodic fluctuations in the vessel's riding lever GZ. The GZ is a critical stability parameter, hence the term parametric rolling. Large container ships and roll-on, roll-off vessels typically feature wide upper bow sections due to bow flare, which facilitates deck cargo stowage. Similarly, the upper stern is wide to accommodate cargo. The bow flare makes the water plane larger if the upper part of the bow section becomes partially submerged. Similarly, the after part of the water plane increases once the upper part of the stern becomes submerged. Unlike the bow and stern, the midship section is wall-sided. This means that no change occurs in the water plane width with variations in draft. As the ship moves through the waves, its water plane area changes periodically. Let's examine the changes in the water plane that occur in two situations. First, when the wave crest is located amidships, and second, when the wave trough is located amidships. When a wave's crest aligns amidships and the wave's length approximates the ship's length, troughs form near both the bow and stern. The bow section at the waterline is considerably narrower than the flared section above it. When a wave trough aligns with the bow, the draft at the bow decreases, resulting in a narrower water plane in this area. The aft section near the waterline is very narrow, primarily designed to ensure sufficient water flow to the propeller for efficient propulsion. When a wave crest is positioned amidships, a second trough forms near the stern. This reduces the draft at the stern, narrowing the water plane in the aft region. The midship section is typically wall-sided, so it does not affect the water plane. The cumulative effect of a wave crest positioned amidships is an overall reduction in water plane area. When a wave's trough aligns amidships and the wave's length approximates the ship's length, crests form near both the bow and stern. The section with bow flare is wider than the section below it. When a wave crest aligns with the bow section, the draft at the bow increases, resulting in a wider water plane in this area. 
The upper aft section is wide, primarily designed to maximize container capacity. When a wave trough is positioned amidships, a second crest forms near the stern. This increases the draft at the stern, widening the water plane in the aft region. Simultaneously, the draft at midship is reduced, but since the hull is wall-sided in this region, there is no change in water plane area. The cumulative effect of a wave trough positioned amidships is an overall increase in water plane area. This periodic variation in water plane area leads to fluctuations in the ship's writing lever, GZ. These cyclical changes in GZ can induce parametric rolling. The relationship between the water plane area and GZ can be understood through three key equations. We saw that when the ship moves through waves, the water plane area changes, which may become significant if the wavelength is comparable to the ship length. The water plane area directly affects the moment of inertia of the water plane about the centerline, also known as the second moment of area. Change in the moment of inertia directly impacts the metacentric radius, BM, according to equation one. Consequently, changes in BM will alter GM as described by equation two, and GZ will be altered with changes in GM through the relationship in equation three. Now that we understand how the water plane area influences GZ, Let's examine how periodic changes in GZ can amplify roll motion. As previously explained, when a wave crest aligns with the ship's midship, the water plane area decreases. This water plane area reduction leads to a decrease in the moment of inertia. Consequently, BM is reduced, which ultimately results in a lower GM. As GM is decreased, the ship will start to roll over. Then, when the wave trough reaches midship, the water plane area increases. This increase in water plane area leads to a larger GZ and the ship will return to the upright with an increased roll motion since there was an additional restoring from the increased GZ. If at that time the ship has again the wave crest at midship, the GM is decreased again and the ship will roll even further to the opposite side because of the greater roll motion rate and less resistance to healing. Then if the wave trough reaches the midship section, when the ship reaches its maximum roll amplitude, GZ increases once more and the cycle starts all over again, developing into parametric rolling. It is important to note that there was one half of the roll cycle associated with the passing of an entire wave. So there are two waves that pass during each roll period. That means the rolling period is twice the wave encounter period. When this relationship between ship's rolling period and wave encounter period occurs, resonance conditions can be met leading to the amplification of roll motion. This is a resonant condition where initially small roll motions can grow exponentially if the conditions persist, leading to significant rolling. The officer of the watch has a critical responsibility in monitoring ship motions and environmental conditions to anticipate and prevent parametric rolling. To effectively monitor these conditions, the officer of the watch should regularly observe and record the ship's rolling and pitching periods. Two, pay particular attention when the wave encounter period is approximately half the roll period. The wave encounter period could be either measured as the period of pitching by using a stopwatch or by use of the diagram found in the Maritime Safety Committee Circular 1228 of the International Maritime Organization. Three, Monitor regularly wavelength when sailing in head or following seas. Be alert when wavelength is approximately equal to ship length. The wavelength is determined by visual observation in comparison with the ship length and at night by observing the X-band radar on small scale and manual settings. Four, utilize decision support software designed to predict parametric rolling. Five, exercise extra vigilance in following and quartering seas if your ship has a low GM. Six, report any concerns or observations regarding potential parametric rolling conditions to the master immediately. The vigilance of the officer of the watch in monitoring these factors serves as a critical early warning system for potential parametric rolling situations. By carefully observing and analyzing the relationship between the ship's motions and the surrounding wave conditions, the officer of the watch plays a pivotal role in preventing the onset of parametric rolling events. If parametric rolling begins to develop, immediately alter course to position the waves abeam to the ship. 
The primary objective is to disrupt the synchronization between wave encounters and the ship's roll motion. Once course alteration is initiated, call the master to the bridge. This quick action aims to break the resonance effect and stabilize the ship's motion, while ensuring the master is promptly informed of the situation. Damping is a general term for a process that inhibits oscillations by draining energy from the system. Roll damping plays a critical role in the development of parametric rolling. If the loss of energy per cycle caused by damping is more than the energy gain caused by the changing of GZ in longitudinal seas, the roll angles will not increase and parametric rolling will not develop. Once the energy gain per cycle is more than the energy loss due to damping, the amplitude of parametric rolling starts to grow under these conditions. There are several devices that naval architects can install to damp down roll without making radical changes to the hull cross-section. The pump, labeled P, transfers air between tanks to displace water and create a corrective lever effect. Employing anti-roll assist software for both voyage planning and real-time decision-making. This kind of software assesses the probability of parametric rolling by analyzing environmental conditions and vessel-specific characteristics. It presents its output as a polar diagram illustrating danger zones based on ship's speed, heading, and prevailing sea conditions. By looking at the polar diagram, the captain can see whether the ship is operating in or near a risky situation and conclude whether changing the speed or course is the best option to avoid a roll risk. The anti-roll assist applications can be used as a standalone product or be integrated in other ship software systems. The International Maritime Organization developed the second generation intact stability criteria that address parametric rolling more comprehensively. Major classification societies have introduced new notations for ships fulfilling requirements necessary to counter parametric rolling. Let's wrap it up. Parametric rolling remains a potentially dangerous phenomenon in maritime operations and a critical concern for seafarers. The key to mitigating the risks associated with this phenomenon lies in understanding the science behind it, recognizing the warning signs, and taking prompt, appropriate action. Unlike normal rolling, parametric rolling is not caused by the waves pushing the ship from side to side. The rolling motion can develop quickly, sometimes in just a few roll cycles, often catching the crew off guard. Once initiated, the rolling motion tends to increase in amplitude if conditions persist. Parametric rolling is observed in head, bow, following, and quartering seas. Parametric rolling is most likely to occur when the ship encounters waves at about half its roll period, and also when the wave length is approximately equal to the ship's length. These conditions create a resonance effect that can amplify the ship's rolling motion, potentially leading to dangerous situations. Knowledge shared is knowledge squared.
Share this video with your fellow seafarers.